What's up guys? Cass here from Give Wave Studios. Welcome to part two of the Soldier 76 uh, tutorial for the DIY kit that I saw in the Etsy shop. So um, if you watched the first one, it was really long, sorry, but there's a lot of pieces and just want to make sure that everyone knows how to put everything together properly. Uh, but now that everything's all set, basically you're going to grab your heat gun and you're going to heat seal all of your pieces. All right, so we're just gonna go over all of your parts and heat seal everything. Um, before you do this, you wanna make sure that, you know, if you have any rough edges, you grab your sandpaper, make sure everything is smoothed out. You should be not gluing any more things uh, once you get to this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed through that. So you might wonder, but Cass, you sent me some lights. How am I supposed to put lights in my prop? Well, real quick. So you see this little thing here that I built? I basically built a little housing for the battery. And the only cable that shows is like from right there until it enters and everything else is organized, which means when this plate is on, you can barely see any of that going on, all right? And so in order to do this, you're gonna grab some of the scrap foam that comes with your kit. And you're basically gonna measure out how uh, tall you want this piece to be. So I have it, you can tell it's maybe like a couple of millimeters taller than the battery case itself, right? And I've cut three pieces to length. So going left and right, across about the same length and one piece that connects the two right there. And then once I have that, I'm gonna put it down on a piece, a larger piece of foam. Trace this out like so. Okay, and I'm going to basically just glue that into place. A barge right there. And grab my edges. Here, 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 here. Thin layers, remember, thin layers. This, so this stuff can dry fast. Actually, I'm going to start right up against the edge here, since that's not going to be a cut. And then I will put my piece in here and use that to kind of frame the rest of this. Glue that down. All right. Pull my battery case out. Oops, don't fall. And then sharp blade, always. All right. Cut that out. You can go ahead with your uh, Dremel or sand paper, just kind of like sand in the edges and the other side right here. So it needs to be right there. I don't know if you guys can see it. Okay, so this top piece, so it's on the opposite side, it's where your stem is, which corresponds to this part of the gun. And now you have a little hidden case for your batteries and when everything comes in, you can just run the wire and the lights into the tube and you're good. All right, let's get to it. All our parts are laid out. I'm gonna hit this with some Plasti Dip, at least three coats for everything. And we're gonna let everything dry 15 minutes in between coats, go back in, then paint. three cans of Plasti Dip to get all of my parts completely covered. So expect that. Uh, I did do three coats though, so uh, which is nice. Everything's smooth and even. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the dark parts with metallic soft flat iron from Rust-Oleum, which are these parts right here. And then the top and bottom of the barrel as well as the lip of the cannon I'm going to hit with this satin nickel, also from Rustolium. These guys right here to the blue details of the gun. I'm going to hit with some deep blue uh, gloss or satin will do. And then these guys right here, I'm going to hit with some Valspar uh, satin, like light gray primer. All right? And then obviously the tube and this guy right there are going to stay black. All right, 
So for the grenade launcher part, as you can see, I have already painted most of the front part. Is it the uh, soft flat iron? The part that's masked right now is completely painted, so I've masked that off so I can paint this half the satin nipple. And then I'm gonna mask this piece and this piece to do this general area. That same blue that I have these, all right? Now I'm going ahead and mask the rest of this. Now that everything is painted silver, like so, because this is the only part that I need to be blue. I'm going to paint it the same blue that we did these elements over here. So while we wait for pieces to dry, here's a little detail that you can do. So you can grab a piece of paper, put it up to the piece with the holes right here, and more or less get a sense of how wide it is. You want to cut a piece that's large enough uh, that there's no gap in between the holes there. So I'm going to grab this and cut this all the way down. Pretty straight line for a free hand. Alright, I'm going to wrap this around itself. Mark where this meets with your app open. If it works. Alright. I'm gonna cut this out. And we're going to use this as kind of a pattern. Side is a lot smaller, so I'm gonna go ahead and make this a tad smaller. So we're gonna use this as a pattern so that we can stick this in here and we can have like something blue on the inside. Or you can use something like cellophane paper, you can use um, like tab insertables, like a blue one. Cut that out and put that in because what you're trying to do is just create a diffusion for the light for when we put that in there. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my pattern back and I'm going to cut that out of my material. I'm doing it with special material that I use here in the shop all the time for props, but again, you guys can use. Uh, anything you'd like for this step. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed through this. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my lights, stick them in there, and when I turn this on, I have a nice little effect and everything's diffused. So even though I have white lights on the inside, you get a blue glow from this part. All right, so we're gonna put that aside and move on to the next couple pieces. Alright, with most of our parts painted, I'm going to start assembling some of the final pieces right here. And I'm going to do these on either side of this. That's my top. Remember we had put our stoppers there so we know exactly where this ends and begins. So basically, I'm gonna grab like a pencil or just something that I can make a light impression with and just trace out where all of this is supposed to meet. That way when I put my glue down, I don't affect uh, the silver paint that's gonna show. All right, so go ahead and put your piece down, follow your guidelines. Right. That way you know exactly where your glue goes and then we're gonna put all this stuff together. Alright, we have all of our parts assembled, looking good. So the next step will be to wedge this in place 
and glue it in place. And complete this entire piece, right? And you're gonna basically put either glue down the spine of the tube and on the inside of your pieces there and glue that together. But before I do that, because I'm gonna lo lose access to this tube, I'm gonna go ahead and start doing some weathering with, um, this is called <clears throat> Robin Buff. So I'm just gonna lightly go over some of the pieces of the tube and just kind of hit them with just like a few highlights here and there, just to show a little wear and use. Pretty much just kind of like the edges, just a little bit. They're not trying to do too much. This is just a slight highlight just to show some type of use. I'm gonna do that on both sides and I'm gonna glue everything together. Okay, just a little bit. Just adding a little bit of that makes a little bit of a difference. It makes it or you kind of look like it's metallic, right? So usually the barge doesn't play well with paint. So if you see that you're trying to spread it and it's lifting, just go ahead and rub it, rub it off, ball everything up and start over. Cause at that point it would have completely taken out whatever paint it's been in contact with and more than likely expose the foam underneath so that you can get good adhesion, okay? surface because the tube is exactly the length that it needs to be and there's definitely an opportunity to put this on crooked if you're not careful and there's no coming back from that okay so there and then just kind of I'm hovering on top of it you guys can't see me but I'm just trying to make sure that as I'm lining this up, it is as straight as I can get it to be. Okay. That should do it. We have our front piece. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and embed some magnets into here. So I'm going to grab two neodymium magnets, I believe these are 10 millimeter by five millimeters, so 10 millimeters in diameter, five millimeters in height. I'm gonna embed one right in the seam here. So I'm just gonna make an impression like so, so I know where this goes, and then possibly just apple pin it real quick. So it's a little bit more permanent like that. And then I'm gonna bring one up about there. I don't know what so I'll open that. Dremel this in about the depth. About the depth of the magnet. So I put my magnets in, okay, and uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the uh, matching size of the magnets, separate these, so one and two, I'll bring this over, now I've already put my stem there, all right, and here it's nice and solid, I'll show you guys how to do that in the assembly tutorial. Snap that into place, and I'm going to press on here to kind of get a sense of where these line up. 
And then once I make an impression, I'm gonna go ahead and mark those areas. So if you can tell, I've made a couple of marks. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but yeah, I've made marks to know where to Dremel in next. So I'm gonna Dremel these holes in. I'm gonna place the magnets with uh, some Gorilla Glue and just let that dry and speed through them. So the same way I put magnets on here and here, I'm going just to do a similar thing for these pieces. So I'm going to line these up, I'm going to drill my holes, uh, I'm going to do one here, one here, and I'm going to make an impression, I'm going to drill the opposing holes, and those will be able to snap in and out. Same thing for these, I'm going to do the magnets right here and right here, on the other side, so on and so forth until I have everything. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and speed through that process and we'll get into some finer detail stuff and also some weathering. sits. Now I can grab the tube, foam tube that we had from earlier and jot that in there. And what I'm going to do is glue these two together so that this comes off as one piece. that does that I can kind of slide this down because this glue dries fairly quickly and take this out put some glue on this side slide this down put this back in place and then lift this back up have the two pieces touch seconds when I take this off the whole thing comes together comes apart as one piece I have a full panel voila all right uh, again this is optional you guys can just glue all of these parts right there if you feel the need to so at this point we really only have two more pieces to install install right which is the rim of the rocket launcher and these pieces that belong on this part here which we're going to do all right so I'm gonna go ahead and glue these and glue these we already talked about how to install these I'm just gonna go through it real quick and then we're gonna go into some weathering and adding some really cool detail in hardware Is installed. You go ahead and grab our lights from earlier. Pull that PC 
out. I'm gonna go ahead and slide this in into place. Plunge our lights right in here. that and we can go ahead and do a quick one off looking good okay and also grab our helix cannon magnetically attach this here now if you put your magnets in um, before you paint it you should go ahead and scrape off any paint on the magnet because if you leave it on for too long it will stick and also uh, it prevents the magnet from having like maximum strength so uh, do make a note to get that done with your stuff all right and that is the entirety of our gun on a lot of these pieces here like this little rivet here this little divot here um, a lot of these screw holes I've gone ahead and got just a whole bunch of sizes of uh, screws. And I'm going to put actual hardware on this so that it looks a little bit more real. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed through that process and show you guys the final result. All right, all of our hardware in place. You can see I added some small little screws here couple of round head bolt screws, some hex screws, larger screws in here. This actually serves as a guide for the magnets when I put this in, which actually is really nice. And then we have details going on on both sides. So now we're gonna do uh, some more detailing. Wait. There we go. So basically, what we're going to be doing is just cutting out. You can grab, you can paint this on, or you can grab some reflective tape and cut out the shapes, paste them in there. And then we're going to do a bunch of weathering with some rub and buff throughout the whole gun. And we're going to do a little before and after. And after that, ja! Last but not least, we'll be adding our wires respectively to the left and right. I believe soldier is ambidextrous, so it all depends on where you guys want to put it. So I'm going to go ahead and hot glue these into place. This one's going to go right there. And then the short one goes on the other side here. So it goes from here. Here to there. So I'm going to drill a little hole in here with the Dremel and just kind of stick that in there. So I also made this piece, uh, which is basically a frame, a base, and then I added uh, some translucent uh, cellophane paper on white so it can have a nice shine to it. And so you basically just layer stack these uh, on top of each other. I didn't go through the process because I literally added this last minute as I was making this gun and decided, you know what? I need an ammo count. And there it is. Now you guys can have it as well. I'm gonna put it on both my props that I'm shipping out. And with that part attached, we are officially done with our build. Huh? Look at it. Look at it. Now, if you did all of the magnetic, magnetically removable parts, you're going to be able to really uh, pack this nice and flat for your big dragon con trips or anytime you're going out of state with your props. And also remember that this is magnetic and comes off. And remember how we had talked about scraping the paint off, you can see. And we have our 
helix rocket storage unit in here. Pump that in there. Put that back on. All right. Also, these parts are removable. I ended up doing both of them separately, but again, you can go ahead and do the two of them together if that works better for you. We still have our button on the inside here. It's going to turn on and off our lights. All right. And of course, we can detach our gun completely and make it completely collapsible for transport purposes. All right. So if you've made it this far, congratulations, guys. You completed your Giveaway Studios DIY kit for the Soldier 76 Pulse Rifle. Catch you guys on the next one. Cheers.